guys, welcome back to another episode of In the Kitchen with Sandy. I have a fantastic lineup for you coming up of recipes that I am going to be making. I've um, got several of them today that I'm going to be filming and they'll be, you know, slowly getting their way out there to YouTube. Um, but today we're going to start off with one of my favorite comfort foods and that is chicken fried steak. I love chicken fried steak. I absolutely love it. It screams comfort. Um, it, you know, you make the nice um, chicken type gravy to go over it and it is amazing. Serve it with some mashed potatoes, some corn, green beans, um, and it, it just screams comfort. Oh, I love it, love it, love it, love it. Um, but this is just not any type of um, chicken fried steak. This is buttermilk chicken fried steak, so it's gonna be extra fabulous. All right, today we will, we will be using, um, I've got some cube steaks in here, um, and they have been sitting in this buttermilk for about an hour, hour and a half, and this is gonna help tenderize it. A lot of people say, oh, I don't like the cube steak, it's too tough, it's too grainy, it's too stringy, it never turns out tender, and you know what? This is good, this is gonna work. I, this is gonna work for you. Um, I've also got some flour here in another little pan. Um, I've got a little bit of time, this is gonna go in our uh, gravy. I've got some garlic uh, salt here and I've got some more flour for to thicken our gravy with. And in here I've got some um, chicken stock. Actually this is just water and, and two of the uh, chicken cubes, the bouillon cubes. We're going to use some oil and a little bit of oil and then we're also going to use um, some fresh pepper and that is absolutely it. This is so easy, so simple. So what we're going to do is, like I said, this has been in the buttermilk for probably about an hour, hour and a half. So what you're going to do is you're going to take it out. So simple. You got to be careful. It's already been tenderizing in that. So it's going to be a lovely, 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 delicious piece of meat once we're all done. And then you're going to take your flour here. You're going to let that drip just a little bit, and you're going to go ahead and place that right in your flour there. And then let's adjust the camera some so you can see a little bit better. I don't want it to fall off. Um, what I want you to do next is go ahead and sprinkle on some of your, your garlic salt. I like to use garlic salt in replace of my regular salt all the time. Now, you don't have to use an additional salt because the chicken stock has salt in it, and you've already got the garlic salt on there. And a little bit of pepper and the reason why I didn't season my flour at you know first this time or at all is because I'm just doing two of the the uh, pieces of meat here because I've got a lot of filming going on today so I've got a lot of food that I'm gonna be packing to work to all my friends they're gonna love it um, but just go ahead and dredge it real good and then you're gonna turn it over flour it real good there you want to make sure you get it really nice and floured. Turn it over there, um, and I know it's already got some flour on there, but it's okay. I want you to season. I want you to season both sides. Season that really good with that garlic. Oh my god, I can't take it. I can't take it. It's so delicious. And you can, you know, serve this with mashed potatoes because um, you're going to have the gravy and um, maybe some corn. Get some fresh corn from your local. Uh, farmer's market because it's so good this time of year. Absolutely amazing, especially the corn on the cob and the green beans. You can make you some nice green beans and potatoes to go with it. Your family would love you for that. So let's move everything. I don't have a lot of room to work with here. It's very difficult when I have nobody to film, um, but it's okay. We'll make it work. Go ahead and add a little bit more flour right on top of that. You see what I'm doing? All the seasonings is going to be right underneath that beautiful layer and I want you to look how the buttermilk see what the buttermilk does see it went from a thin piece of meat to a nice big thick looking uh, piece of steak there now I want you to let that sit there look at that can you see let me turn you around a bit can you see that look I've laid it on a nice rack that's overlaying like a cookie sheet and we're gonna go ahead and do the uh, same with the uh, other piece of meat here we're gonna take it and we're just going to let it drip, 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 drip. Go ahead and place it in there. And then you're gonna season this one as well. And we're just gonna let these rest on this, on your little tray here. 
and get a little rack for about five minutes or ten minutes. You're gonna let I let that see how it's already starting to. Oh, I'll show you. We'll get there. I'm jumping ahead of myself. Let's go ahead and season this with some pepper. And guys, you know what? I really hope you don't mind videos like this because you know my daughter's back in school. She is the person who does all the filming for me uh, for In the Kitchen with Sandy, and she does an amazing job. Give a shout out to my little girl Olivia for doing such an amazing job. But anyway, she is back in school, so in order for me to get recipes to you, I have to do them the best way that I can. And if it's filming in this manner, then it's so be it. And, and then go ahead and take the rest of your garlic salt there. Oh, infuse that baby. And a little bit of pepper. Or a lot of pepper. You know I like a lot of pepper. And again, that is going to be... Let's put a little bit more flour on top of that. Absolutely amazing. Any piece of meat, if cooked properly... It's going to come out nice and tender. And hey, if you don't know how to cook it, just throw it in a crock pot. Crock pots make everything tender. All right, I'm going to move this to the side here. Watch me drop this on the floor. Wouldn't that be something? Um, and then you're just going to lay that right out there. And like I said, you're going to let this crisp up. It's going to not crisp up. I don't know what I'm saying sometimes. But when you allow it to sit like that, get a good look at that. When you allow it to sit, see how it's getting all nice and, uh, I don't even know what the word is for that. Um, but you're just going to let it rest here for um, about five or ten minutes, and then it's going to be absolutely um, amazing. Let's get back up here to me. So we're going to let that rest um, for about five, ten minutes, and then we're going to go to the stove and get started. This is very simple, very quick and easy dish. Um, screams comfort. I love comfort food. Love, love, love it. Um, so we'll, let's... We'll get started shortly. Okay, it's very important to make sure that your camera is turned on record mode when you start, when you're filming. How, how crazy is that? Uh, but anyway, what I've done and what you missed is me putting these in the pan. I did not have it on record. But anyway, I want you to look down in here. Look how beautiful. Um, the buttermilk, see how that is adhering, the flour is adhering to that, and you know that's gonna be nice and thick and crunchy. Um, but I have my pan on about medium, slightly over medium. I put my oil in, um, and again, I used the, oh Jesus, it's so hard to do this. I'm using, um, this is vegetable oil. You can use canola oil, you know, any type of oil you use. I do not recommend using um, olive oil, not, not, not in a frying process. Um, but I've got it in my pan here, and you want to make sure your pan gets nice and hot. You don't need a whole lot of oil. You just need enough just to fry it in. I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit more pepper right on top because I think pepper is just, I think, I think it's beautiful on top of like a crispy, fried, delicious, um, you know, coating. It looks absolutely amazing. We're going to let these go. We're not going to touch them for about... Uh, maybe about four minutes on each side. I'm going to flip them about four minutes and then um, I'll show you what they look like when they're done. Okay, guys, look how beautiful those are. They cooked on um, each side for about four and a half minutes um, a side. Um, absolutely beautiful. Look how nice and, and look at the coating. Absolutely gorgeous. All right, and what we're going to do next is we are going to start on our um, gravy. So th this is the amount of grease that I have left in my pan. And I think that's going to be just enough grease um, that's or oil that's left over to make my gravy. You definitely don't want to, um, to, you know, to use too much. Um, but we're going to go ahead and, and add our flour to the pan. And this makes for such a beautiful gravy. Beautiful, beautiful gravy and then you're just going to whisk that you're going to whisk it whisk 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 you want to make sure that you get your um, all the flour you know it's you're kind of cooking it you're, you want to make sure you get all the raw flour um uh, let's put it all in there because i want mine to be nice and thick um and again it's, it's still on medium you want to make sure that you get all your flour they're coated with the oil because you want to make sure that you know you get all of the raw flour taste out of it and give that a nice stir. Now I like to brown mine a little bit. I like to make sure that my 
Um, my flower is browned a little bit. Let me see if I can get you down in there just a little bit better. See, look at that. And you're just gonna whisk it. That's all you do. Um, and I'm just gonna continue to do this until mine gets to the desired color that I like. I like mine to be a little bit more brown than this because I like my gravy to be a little bit more brown than that. Let's see if I can't fix you here. Beautiful, beautiful, okay, see that? And again, it's about on medium. I'm gonna go ahead and hit it with a little bit more of the um, garlic salt because it's the seasonings that I do have in with uh, my, my chicken fried steak. So I want my gravy to have a little bit of the same flavors going on there. You wanna season every, every layer there. And some pepper. Oh, I smell it, smell it. Let's turn it down a little bit. And give it a nice stir. This is about brown like I like it because it's going to make your gravy turn a nice, beautiful brown color. Look at that. you got to make sure that you whisk it, you know, continuously because you, you definitely don't want to scorch it there. Mm. You can smell when it starts taking on that nice, uh, the flour is all just, you know, kind of dissipating in it. And then you just add your liquids. Just slowly add your liquids. A little bit of time and kind of whisk it around there. You know what? I don't know if I told you to use milk too. I don't remember if I told you to add milk. Um, but we used about a cup of chicken stock and then about a cup of milk, cup and a half of milk. Because you want your uh, gravy to be creamy. You don't want it all just chicken stock. And then you're just going to whisk that until it becomes to the desired thickness that you like. And now's a good time to go ahead and add in your um, your thyme. Oh, this makes for an amazing flavor combination. Mm. Chicken and thyme together anyway is amazing. I always put thyme when I roast chicken. Oh, perfect. Oh, it smells so so good and then just continue to whisk it all right my gravy is done and it is done to perfection like I said I don't like my uh, gravy over my chicken fried steak to be super super thick I want you to look at the consistency of that it's a little runny um, slightly runny but that's exactly how I like it for my um, potatoes and my my meat here and I can't tell you how fabulous this smells it smells absolutely amazing and you're just going to pour it right over your country fraud steak there look at that see perfect that is the perfect consistency for me that is absolutely beautiful now you do as little or as much uh, gravy as you want on yours but i like a lot of gravy Seriously, guys, if you didn't love me before, you're going to love me now. And then just go ahead and top it with a little bit of beautiful uh, parsley there just to make it look extra gorgeous. I want you to look at that. Get a look at that. Isn't that lovely? Absolutely beautiful, and it smells amazing. Okay, my camera is telling me that my battery is low, but you know what? I'm going to dig in. I want you to look how tender this is. Look at that. Absolutely goes right through there. Look at that, and that is the beef cube steak. Look, oh, look at that gravy. Mm, 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 mm. So tender, so beautiful, and so delicious. I gotta take my glasses off. And we're gonna go ahead and give this a try because you know I like to try my food. So easy. Oh, there we are. Mm. Let me tell ya. I'm gonna fix the camera here. The time makes that gravy amazing you're gonna love this mm. subscribe if you haven't already hit that subscribe button if you didn't love me before you're gonna love me now mm, you know I love you also very much I appreciate you watching mm. I appreciate the beautiful comments that continue to come in much more to come I love y'all I love you all so much and I'll see you next time bye